These are engine nacelles. Nacelle is just a fancy word for engine cover. In addition to the obvious aerodynamic advantages they provide, they are also designed to provide a much more serious life-saving benefit. In the event of an engine failure resulting in a fan blade being ejected from the engine, these nacelles are supposed to provide an added layer of security to help contain any deadly shards of metal from exiting the nacelle and penetrating the fuselage and injuring or even killing passengers. Yet the nacelles provided by Collins Aerospace to Boeing for the NG sadly had failed that test in a series of incidents that took place in 2016 and 2018. The 2018 incident on Southwest Flight 1380 resulted in the loss of passenger Jennifer Reardon's life when pieces of a fan blade pierced the fuselage causing a catastrophic decompression but also causing her to be partially sucked out of the aircraft tragically claiming her life. So this week, a story caught my eye on the online news site Aviation Week, revealing that the FAA and the NTSB are ready to issue airworthiness directives for Boeing and Collins Aerospace to redesign and correct this fatal flaw nearly four years later. We talk about nacelles next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. As always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified whenever we release new content. Aviation Week is reporting that the FAA plans to issue airworthiness directives mandating three modifications be made to the Boeing 737NG series engine nacelles associated with two separate in-flight engine fan blade failures that claim the life of one passenger in addition to causing heavy damage to the engines, fuselages, and a window. The FAA notified the NTSB that they will be issuing three separate airworthiness directives mandating that Boeing take corrective actions for the modifications of the inlet, fan cowl, and exhaust nozzle. The FAA's letter to the NTSB dated April 2021 was recently made public but has not been previously reported on other than on Aviation Week's website. The FAA added that the FAA is working with Boeing to ensure that the design changes will address the most critical fan blade impact locations for each area of the structure. Aviation Week is reporting that Boeing is finalizing service bulletins for the inlet and fan cowl that details changes operators need to make and could release them as soon as July. The exhaust nozzle modification timing, however, is less clear at this time. In their letter, the FAA said, We are working with Boeing on a schedule for the service bulletin for the exhaust nozzle. As they publish the service bulletins, the FAA will release a notice of proposed rulemaking airworthiness directives to mandate each corrective action. If adopted by global regulators, the directive could affect up to 6,740 NGEs worldwide. The FAA also added, we are working with Boeing to determine if the redesigned fan cowl structure is appropriate for installation in production on airplanes modified into the P-8 Poseidon military version. According to the Aviation Week story, changes to the nacelle assembly were recommended in November of 2019 by the NTSB and agreed to by Boeing following probes into the accidents both involving Southwest Airlines 737-700s powered by CFM 56-7B engines. The second accident, Southwest Flight 1380 in April of 2018, triggered a chain of events that led to a cabin depressurization and the fatality, the first on board a U.S. passenger carrier since 2009. In each case, the fan blades cracked near their roots, fragmenting the blades, starting a chain reaction that caused pieces of the engine inlets to break free from the cowling. In each incident, the flying debris caused extensive wing and fuselage damage, as well as a sudden cabin depressurization in each event. The first accident occurred over Pensacola, Florida in August of 2016. The debris ejected from the engine caused a 5-inch by 16-inch hole in the fuselage above the left wing. 
but in that case, the cowling stayed intact and the cabin wasn't penetrated. But in the April 2018 accident, a large piece of the fan cowl from the left engine penetrated the left side fuselage, breaking the window, sucking passenger Jennifer Reardon halfway out of the aircraft, causing her fatal injuries. But nacelle manufacturer Collins Aerospace disputes some of the NTSB's conclusions, blaming the cause of Reardon's death on their nacelles. In a July 2019 letter to the NTSB, Collins Aerospace wrote, The NTSB's investigation did not establish conclusively that any portion of the fan cowl actually struck the window directly causing the window to blow out of the plane. This also contrasts with the Pensacola event where debris struck the fuselage near a window, yet that window did not break free from the aircraft. An NTSB analyst found that in the 2019 failure, the primary exhaust nozzle stayed attached to the engine, but exhibited 360-degree circumferential buckling and was torn in several places. In each of the incidents, it was the fractured blades that triggered significant engine to cell and airframe damage. This is what led the NTSB to urge the FAA and other regulators to re-examine the role the nacelles played in these accidents. The Aviation Week article said it was the Southwest probes that highlighted major changes needed to incorporate the latest technology and modeling into engine failure analysis. Nearly 60 years ago, when the 737 was designed, there was no such thing as computer-aided analysis or modeling. They simply had to rely on slide ruler and trial and error during hands-on factory tests. For instance, results of a 1994 rig test as part of CFM 56-7 development led Boeing to redesign the inlet container doubler. The redesign was validated in subsequent testing. Boeing propulsion structures expert Torburn Cyberg explained during a 2018 hearing on Southwest Flight 1380 that advances in analytical modeling have changed the process. That was the flight on which Jennifer Reardon was fatally injured. New computer models enhance our capability to be able to understand the physics of the blade impact phase. It helped us in understanding, relying on predictions that are validated by testing as opposed to just waiting until you get the empirical data back from the test. The new modeling is being used to pinpoint model-specific issues that need addressing now. The FAA said in its letter that it worked with Boeing on a cross-model qualitative safety assessment that included all Boeing commercial airplanes with a similar design. Based on the assessment, the 737NG is the only affected fleet. For their part, the FAA said we continue to review certification requirements and the associated guidance materials pertaining to the airplane and engine level aspects for engine nacelles and containment case integrity following a fan blade out event. We are also supporting engine and airframe manufacturers' evaluation of current industry practices for analyzing and addressing fan blade failure events. We have focused on identifying critical data needed by the airframe manufacturers to address airplane level hazards associated with fan blade failure. Well, I don't know about you, but I was wondering whatever happened with this nacelle situation. But between 2018 and now, and between the MAX crisis and the pandemic and just 2020 in general, I guess this case kind of slipped through the cracks. Still seems like a long time to wait, though, considering the possibly deadly consequences. What do you think? Are the nacelles the problem? And can Boeing really be blamed for this situation? Let me know down below. Hey, really quick, I released a big video last week about the amazing true story of the hijacking by FedEx flight engineer Auburn Calloway of FedEx Flight 705 in the skies over Memphis on April 7th in 1994. Even though beaten near to death and paralyzed by Calloway with hammers, the heroic crew mustered the strength to fight back and bring home the fully loaded DC-10 back to Memphis. I hope you've seen it, but in case you haven't, here's a little trailer. Take 
705, have you verify uh, situation is still under control? Well, it's sort of under control. I'm coming around to uh, 36 left. Okay, Express 705, heavy runway 36 left. Clear to land. Clear vehicle approach 36 left. You are clear to land. The wind is 05. I think as many people as possible should have the chance to see this new take on that horrifying yet heroic event. I'll have links in the description. Check it out, I think you'll enjoy it. I'd also like to congratulate our subscriber of the week mug winner, Richard Reed. Richard has been a longtime subscriber and friend of the channel, all the way down in the West Indies on the island of Barbados. And I'm still trying to get a hold of the best comment mug winner. Just so you know, if I pick your comment, I will contact you by replying to your comment and asking you to email me so I can get your information. So if you see a reply from me, check it out and get back to me so I can send you a free, super cool, cheap, overpriced award mug. Also, thank you to Paul Lotta and SVR for your support for the channel via the Buy Me A Coffee app. I always appreciate it. Well, that'll wrap it up for now. And as always, on your way out, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and ring the bell and remember leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground and i will see you next time in the air yeah this is maximus